Hello, everybody. It is so good to have you with me again here at the Workshop of Wood Spun Round. It has been a beautiful day here in, in northern Kentucky. The sun is shining, but it's cold. It's cold. Um, Ruby was just saying a minute ago, it got up to 29 there where she is a balmy shorts and t-shirt kind of day there in Canada. Uh, <laughs> it's cold. That, that's oh, my goodness. That's 29. Hold on. Minutes. There it is. I don't know how that happened, but it did. Anyway, here we are. Back again. There. All right. <laughs> Love all these. You got to push all the right buttons. If you miss one, it goes crazy. Let me real quick pull in the uh, share the show you the board that's here with me today. We've got Ruby Claire. We've got Mark Beckett. We've got Wayne the Wood Turner. Uh, Good evening. Uh, I don't know that we've got a chairman. We just got a board. <laughs> anyway, it's good to have all of you guys in the background with me today. And uh, these guys are going to be uh, uh, sharing your questions with me, your comments, uh, keeping me straight if, if need be. We've got a piece of uh, horn beam here. I was telling the folks a while ago, I've, uh, I've had two half logs that were given to me. Um, they've been sitting under my drill press in my way for ever long time and i thought today's the day we're going to get at least one of them out of the way so i pulled it out drew a circle on it as large as i could get this this is a 12 inch circle um where the the pith is or where the pith would have been uh, it's about four inches where the where the bark comes around it's it's down to zero on both sides so we're going to get a, about 11 11 and a half inch bowl um maybe about uh, three and a half three to three and a half inches deep and uh, anyway we'll see if i don't blow it all up so i'm going to get started um it's on a, uh, a, a recess what's that is that there's always a chance always a chance yeah <laughs> we're going to start this no, uh think, off think positive mark he's not going to <laughs> i have it on a recess that i drilled um what will be the top Started off at about 150. We go, oh, let's back it down just a little. There's 800 there. So if one of you all wants to go ahead and start uh, reading off who's in the chat, we'll get going. Thanks for doing that, Mark. That. Thanks for doing that, Mark. Yeah, I thought it might be. Right, so reading from participants list. So if your name hasn't appeared in the list, it's because you haven't commented. And I'm not ignoring you. I just can't see your name. So we've got... Barry Chitty, Ben Jamming, Chris Walters, Winter Wood Dancers, Copper Owl Wood Turning, Door 60, Fred Gilliver, James Crawford, Johnny Foster, Malcolm Douglas, Mike Hugh from Ilminster, Norman Greenwell, Old Man River Wood Turner, Roger Kent, Rod Dillon, Ronald Todd, Shane Hurst, Thomas Kenny, Todd at Glencove Woodworks, Ward Wilson, Wood and Burrow, Wurzel the Wood Butcher. I love that name. Words of the Wood Butcher. Great right, one. so there you go. If I didn't read oh, your name out, blame Wayne. Yep, blame me. <laughs> and good evening to everybody. Good evening hey to you. Hey, guys. Glad everybody's here today. It's always good to have a good crowd. This wood is very dry, but it's cutting we wonderfully. It doesn't good yet. It might be good. At the moment, we've got say uh, on on my YouTube, we've got thirty nine people watching. Thirty nine. That's Alvin great. Dawson just come in. Hey, Al. And Alan Gibb as well. Hey, Alan. Hi, Alan. Hey, Albert. I don't know if anybody saw, but um, I'll put uh, this is Albert um, put out a post. I think it was in the Worldwide Wood Turners group uh, the other day with um, a vase within a vase, but the inside vase is turned at 90 degrees to the outside ah. vase. Yes, what a wonderful piece. Yeah, exceptional yeah, work, Albert. I'm, I'm sure it's in the Worldwide Wood Turners group, Ruby. Jennifer Craft and Creations is in. Hello, Jennifer. 
Hey, Jennifer. And Graham, Graham Haynes Graham. just come in. Yeah. yeah, sorry, Ruby. You go ahead. Graham Hain has just come in as well. Hey, Graham. Have your woodsheds in? Hello, Andy. Wabby. Hi, Andy. The stumpy one's not in yet, is she? No. Not yet, no. Not yet. Okay. Maybe she'll Ivy come in. I had the, uh, Ivy and I had the pleasure of sitting next to each other last week while we watched Pete do his demonstration. We didn't heckle at all. Oh, I bet you didn't. No, not at all. Why would you be so nice to him all of a sudden? Because he's bigger than me. That's a good reason. <laughs> and Paul Hoyt. Then I win tomorrow night. He's going to be turning up, so I dare say he'll heckle. Hello, Hi, Paul. Paul. Hey, Paul. I'll go ahead and make a mark for my, my uh, Chuck. I'm asking a question, Doug. Absolutely. Why, why would you not have put a face plate or uh, something like that on the front instead? I just didn't. I just didn't. My my. Typically, what I would typically do, and I've I've just started doing it this way. Um, typically, what I would do is just do it between centers. Okay. Um, I've. <sighs> It's interesting that you asked. Somewhere around here, I have a faceplate ring that I wanted to start using, and uh, I can't find it. <laughs> it's here. Well, in my case, when I can't find it, it's because it's already on another piece. Yeah. No, I've I'm, I'm not even used it yet. That's the what aggravates me. I've not used the thing, and I know it's here. I remember bringing it in. I thought I hung it on the wall over here, but it's not anywhere to be found. So someday when I decide it's now or never, I'll do a major cleaning and I'll find it. Yeah, well, says he hasn't used a faceplate in 30 years. Yeah, I've, I've got to say, Ruby, I found a, um, a cheap Chinese force in a bit, uh, the same size which is 70 mil is uh, my expanding jaws uh, on my Axminster chuck and that is predominantly what I use when it when mm -hmm. I'm turning holes. See and I, I would never think of doing that because um, I just don't think the, the hold is as good. Hey, well, the, well obviously, I will totally agree with you on that, on, on that one. If you've got six screws going into a piece of wood held by a, a face plate that is going to be held true and strong but on a piece this sort of size um even up the, okay on some of the thinner pieces i do maybe 14 inch by uh, by two inch the platter sort of sizes the uh, the force in a bit holds really well if i'm doing anything sort of bigger than what doug's doing here you know sort of 12 before um, if I'm doing sort of 14 before 14 be five, I will probably put a faceplate ring on. Okay. I guess I'm just super cautious. Well, it's partly what you're taught to do as well. Like I no, said, I was ta I was taught to start everything between centers. Yeah, that's how I was taught too. When I'm teaching students, I usually have them use either a faceplate or a face faceplate ring, mainly mm -hmm. for safety reasons. Right. Yeah, Bob, I, I was actually taught to use a screw chuck. I've yeah. used them and I've had them come loose too. Yeah, but, but after Harrogate, I don't think I'll be using a screw chuck anymore. You know, what did you buy? What did I buy that is? Wayne, you know how the, how that could have come off very easily if you had taken bowl and screw chuck both all, out of the chuck, and then you could yeah. use a pair of pliers and taken that screw chuck right out. We tried that. Oh yeah, it, it, it didn't it's work. It's an axminster screw chuck, so it's on a 
two inch plate but we did try we tried various uh, things on that uh, what it was ruby it was a piece of um camel thorn i think it's called which yeah. is very very dense it was only around about uh, five inches diameter um i had a hard time actually screwing it under the screw chuck and by the time i turned the outside and went to screw it back off there is no way at all it was screw back off well <clears throat> i'll stick with my face plates and face plate rings i guess yeah now ben has said that he's invented a force in a bit that drills a hole with a dovetail it defies <laughs> both logic and physics you better better patent it ben that's right that's right if it would if something like that could actually work that would be amazing you well to tell you the truth okay you could feasibly do something like that because record power used to do an expand and drill and if you profiled that right, you could actually drill in the initial hole, then expand the drill, drill it a little bit more while it's still in the hole, so you could get a dovetail. Hmm. I think I'll pass. I can do yeah, it. Yeah, I think I'll pass can... as well, but it was it was worth the thought. I can do it faster with, with the tools I have. Yeah, the wood is horn beam. There's a couple of people asking what it is. Yeah. Jen Jennifer has joined us. Hi, Jen. Hi, Jennifer. We said that earlier. You're not listening to oh, me. Okay. I thought you did. What, you wanted us to, to listen to you too, Mark? Oh, well, yeah, I know, I know. Susie's in. Hello, Hello Susie. Hello, Susie. Hi, Sue. That was a good timing, Mark. Yeah. Sorry, getting it quick. <laughs> I have to say, Wayne, though, you did give me the laugh of the day with your comment on Mark. <laughs> <laughs> I'm surprised he didn't comment back. I was too. Well, I treated it with the Contempt it deserved. <laughs> Just for our audience, Mark had messaged us that he he had to check something out before he could come in on Doug's live. And Wayne made the comment that that could take months. Then it turned out that Mark got in before Wayne. <laughs> So the rest of us had another laugh. I had to find my camera, find the battery for the camera, find the lead that connects the camera to the laptop, all of which are in different places. So, yeah, you're lucky I'm here. Aren't you all privileged? <laughs> Rob, Rob heard you were making pickle day. And Todd wants to know, Mark, if you've added a first aid box to your traveling demo kit. No. That's just well, tempting you know, if, if you add your own your own uh, first aid kit, you can pick what color of band-aid you want. <laughs> no, I don't need to pick what band-aids. I've got Jamie sent me some. I just can't wear them in public. No. Yeah. yeah. Jamie, Jamie did send Mark some band-aids with their... Uh, Various uh, swear words on them. Hmm. I haven't seen any of those yet. Oh, that sounds like Jamie. Well, and Alex says we are so privileged to have a gentleman on board tonight. Oh, <laughs> well, thank you, Alex. I didn't know you cared. That's using the term loosely, anyway. Oh, no. Oh, Chris, All Chris, right. you know what the wood is, and it's horn beam, Chris.
Hornbeam. I was telling these guys earlier, this is the first time I've ever turned Hornbeam. Horn and it, um, it is a very, this piece is a very soft hardwood. Is that what it's supposed to be? Yeah, mm -hmm. it cuts really nice. Yeah, it's, it's cutting very clean. But it's, uh, I'm, I'm taking, I'm not taking it easy when I'm cutting it. It's, you know, it's, it has cut nicely. And if you want to turn it thin and bend it, it bends very nicely yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah. As we have seen. Let's see, before I do that, let's turn the speed down and see about getting some of the roughness off of here. There we go. Ah, oh, let's see. Well, <laughs> yes. Ward Wilson has said, Ward Wilson has said it would be nice if people would put info in the title of the of the live. Oh, wait. <laughs> 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 and Chris, no. Chris Walters is asking, have you heard of Obesh, Doug? Of what? O-B-E-C-H-E. -E. No, that's a new one on me. New one on me. Right. Albert is asking, okay, um, Alex has said it's the hardest wood in Europe. Albert is asking, is there another name for hornbeam? Um, I'm, I'm just going to have a look, Alex. Hardest wood in Europe? Surely not. Yeah, the only hornbeam horn I've turned, I... Uh... I, I picked up while I was in France. Every time I come home from another country, I bring some wood from there. Uh -huh. Woods that I can't right. find here. We have um, a couple of different ones. Um, common name, the American Hornbeam is American Hornbeam or Blue Beach. Um, scientific name, Carpenus Caroline, Caroliniana. Um, distribution Eastern North America. Um, sapwood is very thick, with most boards and lumber being comprised entirely of sapwood. Um, colors nearly white. Green is straight with a fine, even texture. Okay, I'm going to go back to the European one now. Um, common name European. A hornbeam or common hornbeam, scientific name Car Carpenus uh, betulus, distribution uh, Europe and Western Asia. Um, hornbeam sapwood is very thick with most boards and lumber being comprised entirely of um, sapwood. Color is nearly white, very similar, I've got this here, to the American hornbeam. Now right. I got that in, I got that information from the wood database. If you just hold on, I will um, I'll just put that link into the chat because it gives lots and lots of information about various woods. Great website. It's been around a long time. It has. And Wayne, you, you probably know better than I do. Um, the guy that, that used to run that or does run it, didn't he used to do a an identification service? I'm not too sure to tell you the truth. Somebody that was connected with it. Um, I was I was trying to find the identity of a chunk of wood I've got. Uh, I really wasn't sure. But anyway, um, as I was searching through the website i found this article by this guy he said he's no longer doing that um at least not for free so uh, it was just taking too much of his time 
So anyway, it's a uh, yeah. If you have a clue as to what you might have, you can go in and start searching and, and reading all the characteristics, comparing it to what you got. Um, yeah. I finally figured out what I had. I had a board of Kingwood. Oh yes, that that is insane. Kingwood is a, a very nice um, type of rosewood. Yes, it's very hard. Um, now that I know what I've got, I'd like to have a whole bunch more. Now, uh, Ronald, um, um, sorry, uh, we've got a couple coming in here. Um, I've put the link in for the uh, the wood database. Ronald Todd has put in that hornbeam is also called ironwood and was used to make oxen yokes back in the day. I didn't know that. I thought ironwood was a, type, a different type of wood. Yeah, the iron wood that I've used is much darker and and much harder than uh, yes, the, the, the yeah. that I've turned. Yeah, yeah this the is iron not wood hard. that I've used is, is harder than hornbeam as well. Um, I am going to check that. One of the things I have learned over the years, um, ironwood is, is really local. Um, most every little area of the world has their own, what they call ironwood. So it could be in a particular location that hornbeam would be called ironwood. I, this piece is certainly not very hard. I know that. All right. This is taken. Well, maybe it won't be so bad. Well, I did take time to cut my sand, uh, sandpaper. I had not done that. Uh, Mark, do you recognize that? Oh, yeah, it looks like Lex. It does. Hmm. I wonder how that happened. <laughs> These are. This is a sample pack that I got when I was at the AAW uh, to try it out. It. It does not. This does not come with Velcro back, and so that's why I'm having to hand sand, I'm which is okay. You haven't trimmed up that right hand edge on the top. Oh, I, I hadn't even started that. That's. I'm just sanding the back side. Yeah, Roy's I always said, to be safe, always said. Sorry. Hi, Roy. Um, I've just had another look on the uh, wood database and had a look at ironwood, and it doesn't really come into the same category as, as um, hornbeam. No. It, it's, a, it's a different type of wood entirely. It's a hell of a lot darker. Um, right. Some, some ironwoods are also known as lead wood, and uh -oh. if anybody has ever turned lead wood, that is extremely hard. And it's one of the few woods that will actually sink in water. Well, that's one of the woods that I strongly suggest using carbides on. I bet. Yep. Whenever you get a really hard wood like, like that, then uh, carbides actually work better on it than, than uh, the usual gouges. Michael McEwen is just coming. Good evening, Michael. Hey, Michael. Now, I am reversing this every grit, reversing the direction of the spin. Um, I do have, I've got it turned down to, <clears throat> excuse me, 490 uh, RPMs. Uh, now, we were turning you, at about 900, so. Did you do up the set screws on your chuck? Uh, no. No. Well, then I, then I would have brought the tailstock up. If I was turning it, I would, but just sanding it, I, I've don't have too much trouble. Now, Haley from um, from Woodenburl has said, Wayne, so is that Eki that I gave you, uh, talking about the, the types of wood. But you conveniently left it behind, smiley face. Haley, I've already apologized for that. There's no need to rub it in. Haley, I've got it. It's in a bag. I need to put it in a box and send it to the forgetful old kid. 
This forgetful old kid keeps getting to send it to me. But I will. I think he's already. I'll tell him. you the truth here, Lee. I think he's already drunk the wine, though. Oh, he has. It's all still in the blue bag. <laughs> I threatened to. I was going to empty the wine out, put grape juice in there, and watch your face. Watch your face when you opened it. <laughs> There we go. All right, this is the last is grit. It, is it? Is everybody in the chat can probably tell me? Mark. <laughs> Excuse me. Holy cow! Yeah. It's sneezing like there's dust in here or something. Oh, do you know what I had happen with the dust the other day in my shop? It set off my bloody fire uh, fire alarms. Oh my oh, goodness! My life. I've never had that happen before, but I happened to be working with a piece of wood that was extremely dusty, and next thing I knew, the bloody alarm was buzzing off. No, it's all right. I'll post it up to him. I've got an account with um, Lars of Force, so it, it didn't really cost me much to send. I've got to say, Haley, um, Mark wouldn't do that to me. If if if, if I left behind a, a bottle of wine, he he would make sure I got it. Yeah, never the end of it otherwise. <laughs> Three years later, he'd still be that bottle of wine. Drink and go down to the. He'd go down to the dollar store and get a two dollar replacement after he drank what was in there. Okay, now I've got a question for the three of you. When you're turning the outside edge of a bowl like that, do you like the uh, the top edge to slope towards the outside, towards the inside, or both? Um. Uh, now I've, I've watched quite a few um videos from. Uh, I always forget his bloody name. Oh, God. Lives in Las Vegas. Originally came from the Jimmy northeast Clues. of England. Jimmy Clues. Jimmy Clues. No, yeah, Jim, Jimmy Clues has a, a theory on this, on the the shape of the the top of a platter, the top of a ball, and how it actually feels to certain people. And he reckons that more females buy balls and platters than males do. So he actually makes them. So from the outside of the bowl, it rises and then goes back in. Well, if you see what thanks I mean. camera, please, Doug. Thank you. I'm exactly there the same as you, Cobrell. I, I've shamelessly ripped off Ben Lucas's rim style on my bowls. I can just... To, so, Fall so into the centre of the bowl. Which way does Glenn do it? He, he turns it in. Downwards into the middle. Yeah. Myself, I prefer turning outward. Well, See, I always it, turn on. I was, I was taught to turn the way that Doug does. Uh, Doug is doing at the moment. Because um, you are uh, pressing down on the end of the green as you're turning towards the centre. Plus, if you turn from the centre towards the outside of the ball, if you get a, a serious catch or anything, that ball, the, the ball gouge, is actually coming back out towards you. So there could be some safety issues. Well, I was just talking about the rim of the ball itself. You're talking about this surface here, right? Yeah, yeah. I, like, I like about a quarter of an inch to a half an inch to angle outwards. Oh, you oh. like it outwards? Yeah. Yes. I've done them both. That's what I was saying about Jimmy Clues. When he's doing platters and balls, he tends to have the 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 rim of the ball or platter going outwards, and then the rest going inwards, right. because it is it's more aesthetic. Yeah. Um, if it's if it's leaning outward, it gives an optical illusion of, of being thinner than it is. If it's going inward, it tends to get, be, it looks a little wider than it actually is. Um, 
I like them going inward because I like them to look wider. Because uh, I tend I tend to cut them thinner, the bowl thinner anyway. But then also, um, oh, it, it at least gives the feeling that it's it's helping to keep the food in the bowl if it's actually going to be used. On a bigger piece like this, I tend to undercut the rim for the first inch. Uh huh. And then that way, when you carry the bowl, you have somewhere for your fingers to hold in. Sure. Plus, it creates a shadow line, which makes it a little more aesthetic as well. Sure. Luckily enough, tomorrow night, I'm going to be doing a, a vase called the ship, so I'll not have to explain this. <laughs> oh wait a minute! We can we can we can we can do all kinds of things with the bars, right? Like, are you going to put the heavy part at the bottom, in the middle, at the top? The the heavy part will be at the bottom. And one one side of it is going to be missing. Oh dear! Oh. That'll be fun. Oh, yes. There was a particular piece um, last night that I was going to put on the fire, and I picked it out of the, the log pile to put on the fire, and I thought, oh, no, no, you're going on the fire. And that's the one we're going to see tomorrow, right? It, yeah, that's the one I'm doing tomorrow night. Uh, like I say, it is wet, so it's not going to be finished tomorrow night. So I may well end up doing two pieces um, out of the same um, tree that I got because I got a, um, a copper beech tree delivered the other day. You know, lately I've been finding my square easy wood uh, cutter makes those cuts you're doing right now, Doug, very easily. Yes, it does. Um, I, I was sharing with the board a while ago that uh, I, I've been turning, this morning I was turning a uh, cherry piece. It's going to be a hollow form, but I did that very thing. Maybe I used the uh, the rougher, easy wood rougher, to do a big chunk of that outside. Yeah. And then and went to the finisher job. to clean it up. Mm -hmm. um, I refined a couple little spots with a gouge, but for the most part, it's been turned with, with the easy wood. Yeah, Daniel uh, Dubois has joined us. Hi, Dan. Dee Dee. Hello, Double D. Hey, Daniel. Just checking the walls. Where where does I where do I get thicker? Right about there. So we got to go down a little further. Don't do that. I put a piece on right there, so I make sure I get that thick area. Seeing you in the chat for a while, Daniel. <laughs> You're well, Mike. Andrew's in. Good evening, Andrew. Andrew, is that Precious? Is that who that yeah, is? Yeah, that's Precious. That's, that's hey, Precious. Asia. That's Precious has arrived. Wayne, give Brian a call. Right now. Yes, Rob, it did. Guess what, who did? Well, he's, he said it better, better felt good for me to be back in the workshop. Turn oh. Up. Yeah, I did. <laughs> yeah, I bet. Couldn't find, I bet. Couldn't find anything, but it, it was, you know, luckily I only needed two tools. Roy says he was given some eucalyptus 16 months ago, and it's still showing 18% wet. I think I would rough turn it at this point. Ruby, did 
did you see I've got to give somebody a call? Oh, I apologize for that. I was yelling at my husband, Wayne. All right. Okay. <laughs> my, my, my apologies. I thought I had muted it, and I must have unmuted myself. Yeah, so if, oh, I yell, if I yell at you, Wayne, it's it's not you. It's the other Wayne. It's not me. Okay. I was, it's the I was wondering why Wayne had to call Brian all of a sudden. <laughs> All right, just I'll stop and take a look at what we got. I think we're getting pretty close to to this depth. This is that point. This is that point in every bowl where you want to deep bevel contact, but just float the bevel. Don't yeah. rub it. Don't burnish. Don't press hard because you get those bloody lines that you can't get around. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You want to make sure you have a, a secondary bevel on your gouge so that it doesn't leave those marks. That does help. I'm going to a secondary gouge because it's sharp. The other one was not. Well, that's a good reason for changing. Yeah. This is a, this is the second bowl gouge I ever bought. Um, first one. I got it down well. I've got it somewhere in the stack with a different grind on it. This one is getting awfully short. It's going to be relegated to a bottom feeder before long. You're only your Doug, second bowl gouge? I, Doug, I mean, that is not short. No, that is. Well, no, I, it's still got, it's got an inch. It won't go in my, my Vera grind if it goes much shorter. I well, can hand grind, grind it, I guess. Grind, you, grind a, you grind a flat area on the round part. Yeah, and yeah. Still down. I've got, where is that? I've got one just like what you're saying there, Ruby, somewhere. I know I've got uh, one. Quite a few times, Doug, I've showed one of my original bull gouges on my yes. lives. And, yes. Uh, yeah. I think I've uh, got about half an inch of flute left. Now, Roy said he turned some... 12 months ago and it went over and split. Did you coat it with something like in grain sealer, really, and then leave it to uh, dry? I found if you coat it with the in grain sealer, that makes it uh, dry slower, so it doesn't tend to go that far out of the room. I could, I could get out my serious bowl gouge i gotta back the camera up here so you can see it 14 feet long what <laughs> diameter is it doug that's a, a five eighths <laughs> that's what i use 90 percent of the time this really truly is a sorby tool all right let me ask the question how many bowl gouges a year do each of you go through? Uh, see, I, I don't actually do as much turning now as I used to. Uh, but I, I used to, I used to go through uh, one a year. But that's always me being a sort of hobby. I'm a turner, but I used to go through a bowl gouge a year. Yeah, I'd say I'm about. One and a half, maybe two. I've always used a Vera grind, the Wolverine and Vera grind, and uh, my first bowl gouge I used for, golly, four or five years. Um, the, the two Sorbies that I've got now, I got one to replace the first one that I wore out. And the second one, well, come on, get on that magnet. There you go. Um, second one I got just because. <laughs> I think I got a good deal on it, maybe. Is it, is it, say mine's probably, mine's probably slowing down because I'm using CBN wheels now. Right, that makes a difference, I, I think, too. I think pretty, pretty much like Ruby and, and Mark, and they're probably yourself, Doug, I have different ball gouges on different grains depending on what I'm doing. 
Right. Uh, yes, Roy, I, that's what I do after rough turning. I coat the teeth with any rain sealer, like a liquid wax, and then I, I just put it on a shelf in my garage for a year and then come back and return it. It'll be a little bit out of round, but if you left it an inch, an inch and a quarter thick, uh, I find it's not a problem to uh, return it. Now, I probably go through between three and four gouges a year. Yeah, I wouldn't know how to act if I had to buy that many bowl gouges a year. Yeah, but the, right, the, the difference is, Ruby, is that you are doing a hell of a lot of work. Um, yeah. I'm, 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 I used to do a hell of a lot of work, but I'm, I'm only in the workshop maybe two, three days a week now. And, and how you grind makes a difference. Um, I've known people that grind by hand, no jigs or anything, and they go through gouges fairly quickly. Um, that Vera grind, I, I make two passes typically, and that's it. Uh, whether I grind by hand or I use the, the, the Wolverine system depends entirely on the tool. Some tools I, I sharpen by hand. Uh, or touch them up by hand, and others I use the uh, jig. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Right. Can Can I just say that uh, Mark's uh, battery in his headphones has died, so he's had to leave? Oh, okay. Here. Well, sorry to see you go, Mark. That's going to be a pretty little ball. I think so. I think so. Make somebody a nice, uh, nice Christmas present. Yes. I'll fold that paper over just so I can. With some woods, I find that I have to stop periodically and then hand sand in the direction of the grain mm -hmm, before, mm -hmm. to, before I go to the next uh, grit. Yes, <clears throat> there are definitely woods that call for that. Um, your your real soft green. Andrew, well, um, Doug, Andrew's backstage. Andrew is backstage. I couldn't find my. Oh, come on. Good okay, green. Anthony asks, in general, how short do you let the bowl spindle gouge go before you deem for repurposing? Um, usually mine will have a flute of uh, between a half inch to an inch long, max. Hi, Andrew. Yeah, Andy. Precious. Hi, Andy. And then what I do is I stick it into some hot coals, get it cherry red, and reshape it into a different tool. Back into the background, yeah. Doug. Oh, come on. You don't want to be front and center? Nope. You do enough <laughs> nope. of that on your own, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> How's it going, Andy? Are you muted? Yeah, Precious, you're muted. Maybe not. I don't know. I'm not hearing a word you're saying. Nope, we're not either. Nope. There we go. There you are. There we go. <clears throat> yep, the sound <laughs> went for some reason. How are we all doing? Oh, Good. We're doing yeah. well. I, I, I thought you were just too close to the floor. The, the, the mic wasn't picking anything up. <laughs> well, that's probably... It's, it's probably about right, Wayne. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and I... Oh, Rob. Really? Thanks for well, Rob. Hey, AGK, a.k.a. The Troublemaker. Really? <laughs> Sounds like he knows you, precious. He certainly does, Ruby. He certainly does. <laughs> Oh, got a little scratchy spot right in the dead center there. 
We will take care of that right quick. Oh, Heather's in. Good evening, Heather. Hey, Heather. Hey, Heather. How are you doing? Ah, there we go. It's amazing what a little 60 grid on a pad will do. What have you been up to, Andy? Still working hard? Still working hard for the time being. <laughs> yeah. It's been a bit of a rough couple of weeks, but you know what? It's, it's, it's one of those things, you know, you, you put in what you get out of it end of the day. Well, that's yeah. true. Right. Can, can I just mention that um, Andy was up in the Durham area last week, I think it was, doing some, uh, it was, I think it was a, a health and safety review of another uh, plant that he works for. Mm. And... Um, Every time he started walking away from somewhere, he kept on looking around to see if I was there because everybody was just <laughs> around saying, oh, that's champion, man. <laughs> no, it, it, it was so funny, but so disorientated in the same way. <laughs> mm. Champion. One of these days, somebody will start saying champion mint or mint champion. And... <laughs> <laughs> That'll mess things up. I, I, I never, I, in fact, I'll tell you the truth when I was talking, Andy. I never asked him this. Did anybody actually say mint? Uh, yes, they did actually. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. A, That's good. Yeah, on a, on a few occasions. <laughs> I, I was walking out and I was like saying goodbye to everybody and, you know, thank you. It's like, mint man. <laughs> <Mint man. laughs> yeah. Oh, I, th I thought Ruby went awfully quiet all of a sudden. She's muted and away from the, away from her computer. <laughs> uh, she, she must be seeing what what Wynn's doing with this one. Yeah, well, the dog started barking too. <laughs> the dog's uh, owners maybe they were picking up. <laughs> ben Jamming, <laughs> trust Ben. Did they call you pet? <laughs> um, actually, no. <laughs> I'm I'm actually quite surprised with that. Mind you, it, it is pet is usually usually reserved for females. All right. No, I I, I don't recall being called pet. <laughs> but. Sorry, guys. The dog had to go for a pee. Oh, I was shit. wondering. <laughs> he just kind of got quiet all of a sudden. I looked up, you were gone. <laughs> well, when she says she has to go, she has to go. You yeah. Know how oh, it yeah. Is. Oh. That's, I'm kind of that way. I understand. <laughs> well, I have the same issue. When I got to go, I got to go. Yeah. She's taking no for an answer. <laughs> <laughs> no, she doesn't. <laughs> No, Rice is too it. much info. <laughs> Could be. Could be. Can I, can I just give a, a, a wee shout out to Roy? Um, Absolutely. He, um, he put the, the, the lamp up that he turned, I think it was yesterday. Um, he, he did message me um, a couple of times about uh, the finish on the lamp. Um, I've got to say, Roy, that lamp turned out. Absolutely brilliant. Well done, man. He's lamping, man. He's lamping. <laughs> Champion. Champion, man. Mint. <laughs> Cheers, pet. <laughs> Hi, Heather. Uh, Probably totally the wrong context in in that conversation, but it felt quite oh. apt at the time. And Todd asked, why can't you hear pterodactyls urinate? Because the P is kind of... <laughs> Oh, God. Here we go. Here we go. <laughs> You're joking, man. You're joking, man. <laughs> I think you put that up on somebody else's chat the other day. Ah. Uh... Oh, N Niantic River Wood Woodcrafting has just come in. That's Chris. Hey, hey, Chris. How you doing, Chris? 
Um, Haley is asking Roy where we can see the lamp. I'm, I'm sure he put it up on Facebook. In, in a group. Facebook. 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 All oh, right. Chris, it's clear that your ball is looking good. And I agree. There's that little bit of spalting that I was talking about oh, earlier. Nice. Just that one little line is all there is. Let's get it. Uh, Get it cleaned up here. Now, Roy, are you on Facebook as Roy's the boy? No, it's Roy. No, Roy Hill. Hill. Well, yeah, Roy yeah. Hill, I think. A little alcohol there just to get the grain cleaned out. Or he blew it. Well, I oh, can't. Oh, you didn't want that one. Just I got another one. I got uh, curable disease. Drop my alcohol. Drop my paper towel. There we go. He went through that. I think it was Sunday. He was having trouble. He couldn't hang on to anything for a few minutes. No, it wasn't Sunday because he wasn't on last Sunday. Anyway, one time recently that I saw him. I like having the alcohol in this in this spray bottle, but this particular one atomizes it too fine. It it doesn't. There's not enough of it comes out. So I need to find another bottle. Other than that, I like it. Yeah, we got 49 watching at the moment, Doug. It's terrific. Oh, so nice, good to Doug. have all of you in. Those of you who are just coming in, Mark was here with us earlier. He's made the move and was turning in his shop today. and So he'll he'll be back in the swing of things pretty soon. Is that fingers? Fingers? <laughs> <laughs> yes, as a matter of fact. <laughs> we, we were talking about what color band-aids he should stock his shop with. Yeah. <laughs> Probably need to be pink ones. No, 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 no. like <laughs> I said earlier, he, uh, he has already got loads and loads of band-aids. They just yeah. have um, particular types of words on them that he's not probably going to be able to share on a live. <laughs> no. And Lucy's uh, here. Lucy, and happy, happy birthday. birthday. Happy birthday, Lucy. And Lewis, the cra Klondike craftsman, has joined us. Hi, Lewis. Lewis. Hi, hey, Lewis. The Moose Master. Uh, and happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. She likes <laughs> potatoes and stew. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, Precious, don't give up your day job, bud. <laughs> oh, trust me. That's already done. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, there we go. I don't have to be too picky on it. I don't have any, hadn't done the backside just yet, but that'll come. Oh, no, yeah. uh, Chris Nealon is, is just put in, he said, happy birthday. That's for Lucy. And his is tomorrow. And he is 65. Chris. Happy birthday to you too. Happy birthday. We're not about to ask Lucy's age. No way, no how. No, the, the, I think no, I put in my um, in my my thing. The Lucy was um, don't go too hard on the Azbach. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, well, we've already gotten that word. She kind of likes that stuff, huh? I think some, I think that's more of an Andy thing, and she just kind of smells the the aroma afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> Could be. I, I use the axe abrasive paste, but it's like the others. You put it on, rub it in. I started off at right at 200 just to get a good, get it spread evenly and start working it. I'm, I'm up to 510 now. I'm still using that same part of the paper towel. Yeah, they all work the same. All these... Um um abrasive waxes they, they all work in the same type of way yes um 
I do when I L- L- Lucy just put in there that uh, <laughs> Gideon has I've been proudly tell it, telling everyone that she is 41 today. <laughs> in that case, Lucy, she's, just, she's just a youngster. Yeah, she doesn't look oh, yeah. 65. Absolutely. I don't even and think just Andy so you know, just so you know Lucy, Wayne said that, not me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you know there. Right, you, you know how well, you, you can't see older, it. When, when a lot of people get older, they start to actually shrink. Mm. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Lucy, Lucy started when she was 21. Mm. <laughs> I don't know. Mm. It was at 21. I was only four feet tall, and by the time I was uh, 22, I was five foot four. My well, goodness! I don't know what happened to Lucy because I think she's four foot ten and a half and has been for quite a long time. <laughs> My wife went to the doctor a couple years ago. She's always said she was five foot even. Went to the doctor. She was five foot and a half. Half an inch. Yeah. She's proud. She's proud of that extra half inch. Did Good she get her. measured? I've got to ask. Did she get measured early in the morning? Um, I don't remember, Wayne. It could be. Could be. Because what happens is now. Okay, here we go. This is me going back to my training days. Uh huh. Uh-huh. Uh, when you get up in the morning. And you're standing up all day, and gravity takes effect. You tend to lose around about half an inch in height throughout the day. So at the end of the day, you are around about half an inch shorter than you are uh, than in the morning. When you go to bed at night and have a sleep, everything starts to relax. So when you get up in the morning, you're around about half an inch taller than you were last thing last night. It's like when you go into space, you know, there's no gravity. Everything stretches. So when I come back from space, I'm seven foot tall. You wish. <laughs> <laughs> you wish. <laughs> I, you know, I would not want to be seven foot tall. There's no way. Uh, are, are no. you sure you came back from space? <laughs> <laughs> I, I never went. <laughs> are you I sure? I went and it went... <sighs> Push me. <laughs> oh, Matt's in. Evening, Matt. Hey, Matt. Hi, Matt. 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 Matt Harbour, sorry. Hey, Matt. It's good to know which one we're talking about. <laughs> Matt, Matt Harbour. Yeah. Yeah. And yes, so. Matt Giffins, I probably am. <laughs> I'm taller yeah, lying down. He probably is taller lying down. But nobody wants to see him lying down. No. All right. Another paper towel. Uh, I think we're going back to gouges now with what Matt's saying. He owns all his gouges. Right. Right. I don't, I, I, I don't tend to do that, to tell you the truth. I, t- I take mine. St- I use the, um, the Sorby um, Pro and I am. Um, I, I just take mine straight from a, a 120 and start turning. Yeah, I, I <laughs> Are you laughing at Todd? <laughs> yes. Yeah, <laughs> Sorry, I, Ruby. I don't spend a lot of time, uh, just a very quick sharpen and then back to cutting. I don't spend time honing it and uh, refining the, the sharpness down. I find it's unnecessary. Yeah, the the the, the thing that um, okay, a lot of people who do wood turn and do realize this is that you don't need the fine edge on a tool like you do if you're carving. Right. If, right. if you're carving, you need the fine edge. If you're wood turning, you don't need the fine edge. Lucy is afraid that if she shrinks anymore, nobody will see her. Well, that's about, that's about what's happened to my husband. He's now just over four feet tall. He's oh, my, my God. 
Well, he was taller than me at one point. Of course, he was, he's down to about 80 pounds now, too. Is he really? I, I tried oh, to, I offered to give him at least 50 pounds of mine, but he, he just wouldn't take it. <laughs> oh, Ruby. <laughs> oh, dear. I'd be happy to give it away. Understand. I tell I'm you what, that that is looking a very nice ball. Thank you. Huh? Yeah, I I'm like waiting on that like wax to go off. I'll put a little of the brace of paste on the back side and we'll work it. Let this wax really set up instead of wasting that time. What did you start I to say, Ruby? I think that little bit of spalting just sets it off. It does. It gives it just yeah, a it little bit of interest, doesn't it? Let's turn it down. I don't need to be going that fast right now. All right. Yeah. Um, yeah, a little, just a little line of interest. Um, wood is so funny. It can be super plain, and the very next piece be super um, figured and whatnot. And, and sometimes a plain piece, this is relatively plain. It's not totally plain, but just a little line of spalting really gives some interest. Crank that on up. There's about, well, 500 now. Just working that abrasive paste. Well, Lucy's got some pounds. She's free, free to share with <laughs> yeah, doesn't, doesn't everyone? <laughs> So the, 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 there's a, a new Facebook group, Pound Sharing Place. There you go. Pound Sharing Place. I used to despair that I would never put any weight on. I was all skin and bones. Now I, I'm sorry I ever wished for more weight. Yes. Well, be careful what you wish for, Ruby. That's mm -hmm. I wasn't very worried about weight at all until I had that silly little stroke that I had about five years ago. And everybody kept saying, well, when you lose just a few pounds, everything will straighten out. Well, the longer I waited, the more issues they decided that I was having. Like high blood pressure, high sugar, high cholesterol. And I proved to them that I could take care of the cholesterol and the sugar. So I don't have any, either one of those medications now. Thank goodness. Excellent. Good for you. Good for you. Dude, I am taking some blood pressure medication. But that's even better than what I started with. It's it's already been cut down to the lowest dosage that they make. Well, that's good. Of the, of, the, of the lightest drug that they make. <laughs> and I think if I, if I lose the rest of the weight I'd like to lose... I probably can get off of that, so that'll shut the doctors up. Now Rob says he was skinny until he discovered beer. Yeah, weren't we all, <laughs> Rob? Weren't we all? <laughs> and that's when he, um, that's when he had the grandkids. <laughs> now Wayne, were your ears ringing today? Yeah. Lucy, Lucy mentioned yeah, your they, name they as were. he drove past Stonehenge. Exactly. I think that is but, the neatest, neatest structure. It, well, it's a little known fact that I made the rollers to keep those stones wheels <laughs> down Wait, to where you're not place. supposed to share that. I was the one that cut the stones and gave them to you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, mercy. Um, I, I think it was uh, Dale from Maple Tree Stu Studios sent me a picture the other day of um, the pyramids being built with all the, the, the slaves carrying the stones and everything. And the answer I gave to him was, that's before I start turning the rollers. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. You forgot to end it, end it with mint. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> 
Well, Dale probably did that. <laughs> I, to tell you, to tell you the truth, I've, I've still got some of those rollers I'm trying to get rid of. <laughs> <laughs> Wayne, I think we were much luckier than these fo these young folks that, that didn't get to share all those experiences. Oh, definitely, Ruby, definitely. And Martin Ford has just joined us. Hello, hey, Martin. Martin. Well, I think he hit me. Ah, there we go. If that's, the same, if that's the same Martin Ford who is in the UK, um, I sent you a, a message through my Win the Wood Turner Facebook uh, page, uh, I think yesterday. Let's do it this way. Just went ahead and put some wax on the back side as well. Could do it when I turn it around to take the tenon off, but I'll just go ahead and do it now. Then you all can see pretty well what the finished piece is going to look like. Yeah, Mud Harbor is just said, uh, Mud Harbor is just a bit lull. Um, we say mint about things that look shiny and new. That's pretty much the same as uh, where I come from. Matt. Yeah, yeah. No, it is if, in Canada if, too. Yeah, if something looks good, looks really good, we tend to see it's mint. Oh, well, Lucy says her present birthday present from Mandy, she's going to get in April when she gets to spend a day with Darren Breeze. I think oh, that's absolutely great. brilliant, Lucy. Yeah, yeah. Uh, she's getting a Dar tuition day. Yeah, with Martin. Uh, sorry, with uh, Darren. With Darren, Darren is an absolutely brilliant turner. Um, you will learn so much uh, with Darren Lucy. You really will. Just don't forget to take your step stools. <laughs> <laughs> now <you> know. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> right, Ben has said he thinks it's amazing that I have survived COVID, bird flu, and mouth and the black plague. Hey, mm -hmm. I just keep out the way, Ben. Keep out the way. When when, hey, ben yeah. gets, when Ben gets as old as we have, we are, then he may may have caught all those things too. <laughs> and Rob says that you forgot to mention the dinosaurs. Oh, he survived the dinosaurs. Oh God. Absolutely. We used yeah. to have them for pets when we were kids. Yeah. Yeah. The, the, Todd said uh, Wayne was probably a bodger in a previous life, a, 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 a bodger, um, a whittler, a turner, um, a carver, and various other things in previous what, life. What, what was a bodger? <laughs> Wayne, what was a bodger? A, a, a bodger is uh, somebody that works with wood. Uh, it tends to be very... Um, um, I was going to say rough and ready there, but it's nice. not really rough and ready be, because they they do exceptional work. Um, they tend to work without um, power tools. Or just do. That looks lovely, Doug. Yeah. Backside, everything except the foot. I mean, the foot's done, but I need to do the get over here, get the tenon taken off. But the foot is. I, got, I got, just got to clean that up when I take the tenon off. But other than that, that's ready to go. And let's see, what did it end up being here? Change the camera again while we're... It ended up being... Would you believe it's still 12 inch. inches? Oh, yeah. 12 inches. 12. You did a great Sorry. job on that. I just took off the bare minimum. And it's uh, three and... Right at three and a half tall. Wow. So that'll make a nice uh, serving bowl. Uh, if somebody's got a lot of keys, I could use that for a key bowl, I guess. Be a nice popcorn bowl. Yeah, you could even uh, put food in bowl. it. Yeah, absolutely. It's it's wax, so it'll it'll you know it could be used. I would have no problem suggesting people use that to serve food in, or eat mm. the cereal in, for that matter. Very nice. I've, 
I've got I've got my big walnut bowl. It's not much different than the size that I use for salad bowl all the time. I love it. Can you There's adjust a, your mic a bit? There's been a few people putting in comments about bodgers, um, about uh, chair legs and, and things like this. Now, bodgers uh, use traditional hand tools, uh, the likes of draw knives, uh, they split wood uh, down the grain uh, to turn or maybe turn with a pull lathe. Um, or do other stuff uh, using draw knives to make traditional, really traditional types of chairs and other pieces of furniture like that. A bodger is not somebody who basically bodges something together. Um, <laughs> a lot of people take that word. Is a bodger yeah. being somebody who who is not very good at what they do? Right. The proper, right. proper bodger is somebody who knows their craft and can do their craft and produces very very good work. <coughs> what what does any does anybody see anything in that spalting line? What does that shape look like to you? Well, well I can I, see a cloud. I can see a cloud, but I can see a tree under the cloud. Yeah. I immediately thought cloud, but a particular kind of cloud, as in, and I'm telling, I'm telling, no, I'm telling what I grew up in, a nuclear cloud. <laughs> uh, okay, the, yeah, the mushroom, yeah, the mushrooms coming up from the boom, yeah, I see yeah, that now. Yeah, yeah. Uh, as soon as I saw that, I thought, man, it looks like the old nuclear cloud that they used to advertise and uh, that we were to be watching out for all the time. And oh my goodness. I mean, we had when I was in school, we had to, right. we'd have those drills oh, and had to get under our really desk, and <laughs> so anyway, it was a lot of fun. But there it is; that it came out pretty good, precious. I'm glad you came and joined the board today. I yeah, had to, sorry I was late, had, but uh, that's okay. Yeah. That's okay. You're always welcome. Like I uh, tell you guys, you're always welcome, never obligated. I appreciate you being here, all you folks in the Thank chat. You. It's been a good day, and. Um, Let's see. Let me get back over to the chat. There we go. And I'll walk before I close out. I'll I'll read through the chat. I like to read through it to see what was said and what wasn't shared. <laughs> sometimes, <laughs> sometimes it's a good thing that some things weren't shared. <laughs> oh me, just reminds me. I was watching somebody's video the other day, and they had music going on in the background. And I don't know if it's a person turning or if somebody else had music. And I'm thinking. You're going to get a strike if you're not real careful. <laughs> it didn't last much longer. They took it <laughs> off. But uh, I was scared to death they were going to come back and say, I just got a strike. <laughs> well, Anyhow. Today, were, today is Matt Harbour's birthday, too. Well, happy, happy birthday, birthday, Matt. Happy birthday, Matt. Lucy, Matt. There's probably another one or two around. But anyway, it's been a fun time. We're at uh, quarter after four. I've been here an hour and 15 minutes. It's It's been a great time. Um, for my first time turning hornbeam, and I look forward to that other piece over there. I'll probably uh, uh, get it cut into a disc before I leave the shop today. <clears throat> I'm, uh, that'll be another good one. This has been a lot of fun. Uh, Ruby, you got anything special coming up in the next little bit? Uh, just those fellows coming back for another lesson that were here earlier this morning. All right. Um, oh. Yeah, December 12th, I'm doing um, an Easy Wood demo at Lee Valley. Oh, that'll be good. Yep, so I'll show the new uh, beating tools and uh, all the rest Ooh. of them. They Very are good. nice. Very good. And you'll show off that new uh, Easy Wood Chuck, I'm sure. Yes, and, and I'll show off the stand I have for it as well. Yes, that's a dandy stand, I'm telling you. <laughs> it's a fine one. Uh, one of these days, I'll just drool from now till I get my own. What's that? The easy wood, easy, the, the, the easy wood chuck. Oh, yeah. my goodness. It's yeah, a that's game a, changer, mate. It's a oh, sweet yeah. chuck. Um, what I'll do I just, tomorrow night is I'll show the stand. Yeah, 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 that'd be how great. I, how I constructed it. Yeah. Wayne, you got anything special going on? I know you got uh, tomorrow night. 
Right, You'll tomorrow be night I'm going to be turning some very wet copper beach. It's uh, it's not going to be turned to a finish, and um, so I will probably do. I'll probably try and do a couple of pieces tomorrow night out of this uh, very wet cup. It was cut down around about three weeks ago. So okay. it is very wet. So you'll you wear a raincoat, right? Um, possibly. <laughs> or, or a very a, a very heavy uh, smock. One there you two. go. All right. What about you, Precious? You got anything going on? Um. Premier on Wednesday after Wayne's live after I've got a shower from all of the debris coming from Wayne's workshop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, very good. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I've got um, I've got a, uh, a Dremel um, short coming out very soon with a bit oh, of a giveaway oh, as well. Nice. Very good. Nice very one. good. Yeah. Yeah. All right. And then I'll so, be down no, at Jamie's at the weekend. Well, oh, uh, oh. Have, 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 you, have, have you got the um? Have you have yeah. you received the the new one for a giveaway? Um, I already got that one. All right. Okay. <laughs> so yeah, I've not I've not got the uh, the ones, but uh, I've already uh, started editing the video for the new one. Oh, jeez. Christ, man, you're way in front. Oh my goodness! Sorry, US, U.S. dollar is down fifty-four percent. No, 054 percent. Excuse me. Uh, <laughs> good. Scared me right, for a second. Doug, that, that, I think you can put that down now, Doug, and save your arms. <laughs> oh, I'm resting on yeah. my on my chuck. And it's not that heavy. Yeah, it's not that heavy. We're good. I was just going to say, uh, um, I've got a couple of small things coming up, uh, Christmas open houses and those kinds of things. Um, but uh, Wednesday night, after Wayne, after Andrew's uh, premiere, we have World Worldwide Wood Turners. That starts at 7 o'clock Eastern time, midnight that is British time. Midnight UK time. Yeah. Uh, I will you, be there. You are all welcome. This is free internet um, uh, club. You come in through WorldwideWoodTurners.org. You go down just a little bit. And toward the left-hand side of the page is a Go to Meeting button. You press that. That'll transfer you over minute, to Doug. Zoom. Give me a minute, okay. Doug. I'll just get the sure. link. You do that while I'm talking about it. Um, so anyway, you press the button. It'll take you over to Zoom. And you don't need a password or anything like that. It'll be automatic. One of the moderators will let you in. And we just have a great time. Um, we'll be back doing a, a, a good bit of gallery time and then we'll also have a demonstration i don't know who the demonstrator is i never do know who it is until that night um it's not me <laughs> i know that so uh wayne did it just a couple of weeks ago last week we had a uh, tips tricks and hints or whatever uh but it was a great night we did the entire three hours of of hints and tricks and tips and it was great we had a good time didn't get to everybody that had stuff then that was on the list so anyway wayne just put the the uh website there worldwidewoodturners.org very simple like i said just go down here go to go to meeting and somebody will let you in one of the moderators will let you in free doesn't cost you a thing uh, we usually go for about three hours. Feel free to come in when you're able to and leave when you need to. No problem. Enjoyed having you with me today. It's been a good time. And I'm going to let these guys say goodbye. And we're going to hit the road. Bye. Everybody says quiet. Bye, <laughs> everyone. Bye, -bye. Bye, everybody. It's been a good time. Oh, my goodness. There we go. 